on your mark. Get set. Go. So this is um, an elevator speech on quality instruction. This is the counterpoint to how to create math anxiety. This is how to not have math anxiety. And so, gang, there it is. It's instructions, stupid. Da 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 da. We know that in 1992, it's the economy stupid essentially won a presidential election. We know that in 2010, it's the economy stupid created the Tea Party. Sure, curricula matters. Sure, the textbooks are important. But when it comes to opportunity to learn, every single one of you knows it's instructions, stupid. So look at the realities we all face. Look at our limited success. Look at why typical math, room, math classroom practice is so fraught with missed opportunities. Ladies and gentlemen, it is instruction, and I have eight cases and four acts and eight acts and eight acts. Here we go. The kids forget. It's placed in short-term memory. It's not connected. It's not anchored to anything. It vanishes almost virtually, instantaneously. Almost no one remembers something new after one or two homework assignments. Ergo, we're going to get to this on time, ergo by the last one, we know we need to do warm-ups. We need to build an ongoing cumulative review. We need to find ways to do distributed practice. We need to ensure that homework is more than just the insipid waste of time it is. <laughs> Case two, in time. They see it differently. They don't see it our way. They can't picture it. We see a number line. They see money. We present an equation. They need a graph. Yeah. Yes, we will. We need to use representations. We can't just talk about them. We need to see in every class number lines and bar models and graphic organizers and tables and graphs. Just go look at SingaporeMath.com and see what's possible when we visualize it. When we say to kids, show me please, let me see it. To our and their detriment. So much of what we do is driven by a mindset of the one right way to get the one right answer that almost no one cares about. But they do it differently. They don't do it our way. We all talk about one size doesn't fit all. You got it. We need to value and celebrate alternative approaches. Yes, it's hard, but if we're going to make this stuff work, how did you do it? How about you? Who did it differently? How does this work? How are these approaches the same? How are they different? Think about how the kids that we honor, those math team kids, always do it differently. Case four. They give ridiculous answers. They tell us that the tax on the shirt for $29, $146. We never estimate in algebra. We never estimate in geometry. It's simply x equals 75 degrees. Ergo, we need to make number sense an ongoing part of everything we do. If we understand that number sense is a well-developed sense of place value, it's a comfort with numbers, it's a facility estimating, then we need to build that into all the things that we do. Case five says that they don't understand the vocabulary. You know how many kids are screwed up by radius, by root, by, by multiple. They confuse area and perimeter. We see it all the time. They don't, they know the math. But when we tell them that it's about the GCF, they're screwed. Ergo, we need to build language-rich classrooms. I had to just stop there. We need to build language-rich classrooms that use word walls and use vocabulary in sensible ways. We need to recognize that when we don't draw pictures and we don't focus on the words, it doesn't work. They ask every day in all of our classes, why are we doing this? Why do we need to do this? Right? What the hell's the point? We need to have answers and forestall these questions by... Embedding the math in context, presenting the math in problem situations. Here's the math I need to teach. When and where do normal human beings do that? We wouldn't do canceling. Normal people don't cancel. Normal people don't sit there and do foil. Normal people do not do long division with two digit long data. K7, we and they really don't know what, if anything, was really learned. You know how many classes end prematurely with, oh, here's the homework assignment, or I'm sorry, we didn't get it to it today. I taught it, but they didn't learn it. Ergo, we need to put life into this idea of formative assessment. We need to recognize that formative assessment is one of the very few things that actually has a research base that says it makes a difference. So where are the clickers? Where are the whiteboards? Where are the exit slips? Where is the explicit attention to, did they learn what I taught? And ladies and gentlemen, if we're honest, we punt. We punt far too often. We cut corners. Sometimes we don't even plan. We don't worry about the misconceptions. Sometimes we ignore the critical importance of the lesson launch. And we don't worry about the lesson debrief. Ergo, the days of punting are over. We will not do anything except get more math anxiety and more missed opportunities to learn if our planning doesn't incorporate the purpose, the resources, the key terminology, and all that kind of stuff. Yes, gang, it's instruction. And when you get to the last slide, you can read it slowly. 
Look at how much we really know based upon research and observations and common sense. Look at how much we can do if we listen to what they are telling us. Look at how this information can guide our teaching, our coaching, our collective expectations, and thank you. Yeah.